In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together here at this table. and Protestants in the United States took on a whole new meaning and direction because of a choice made by a preacher by the name of Francis Chan. He's a very faithful, gifted preacher. When he speaks even today, he draws you into his heart through honesty, knowledge of the scriptures, simplicity, and humility. His first major life shift was from preacher in mega churches to pastoring smaller, more intimate gatherings. He felt that a lot of people came to services in mega churches to be entertained, to listen to the preacher, and to have no intention of serving others and spreading the gospel. But even in smaller gatherings, 
the focus, he found out, to his disappointment, was on the preacher and the pulpit, and not on the community. So about seven months ago, he took the advice of close friends to study the early church in the first 300 years of Christianity. He researched the lives of early eyewitnesses of Jesus, the martyrs, and the apostolic church fathers. What struck him to his core was the communal life of the early church mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles, centered on the Eucharist, the real presence of Jesus Christ in his body and blood, and not on an individual preacher and his personal interpretation of the Word of God. Acts chapter 2 verses 42, 43, and 46. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and to breaking bread in their homes. In this passage, he was struck by the word devoted that described the life of the early Christians. They were devoted to the teaching of the apostles, devoted to prayer, and especially devoted to the breaking of bread and the communal life. For the early Christians, the focus was not on the pulpit or a preacher, but on the community of disciples, the body of Christ. Francis Chan admitted that Protestants like himself, who consider Eucharist only to be symbolic and not the real presence of Jesus Christ, might have a symbolic communion service with bread and wine once a month, simply to remember what happened 2,000 years ago at the Last Supper. But as the Acts of the Apostles 2 verse 46 reminds us, the early Christians broke bread daily in their homes secretly because they were being persecuted and later celebrated openly in churches when it was okay to practice their faith publicly. Francis Chan concludes that Christians were united in and as the body of Christ for 1,500 years, and only in the last 500 years after the Reformation, Martin Luther shifted the focus from the community and the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist to preaching the word based on the interpretation of one man or woman, one pastor. Because of this, the church has been fractured, and because of the belief in Scripture alone, there are over 33,000 denominations scattered everywhere. Because of this fragmentation among Protestants and Evangelicals, and because Jesus prayed fervently to His Heavenly Father that all believers be united, Francis Chan, in his journey into the Catholic Church, desires the unity of all Christians, so that we become, once again, the one body of Christ. Last week I mentioned to you that contrast can bring clarity to what we believe. I contrasted for you religions and cults like Islam, Mormons, and Jehovah Witnesses that speak of Jesus and their holy books and yet do not believe in the full Paschal mystery, the life, teachings, miracles, death on the cross, resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ that brought us the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. On the other hand, Protestants, Evangelicals and Catholics and Orthodox may have much in common. What is common for 2.4 billion people is our Christianity. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that He is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And we believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
We also believe that the Bible is the revealed and inspired Word of God. There's a difference, however. Seven Old Testament books are missing in the Protestant Bible. Books that were referred to in the stories and teaching of Jesus and the New Testament writers. All the Old Testament books as found in Catholic Bibles were included in the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Testament. Martin Luther, during the Reformation, removed the seven books and wanted to also cut out some New Testament books like James, Revelation, Hebrews, and Jude. Fortunately, the 27 books of the New Testament are intact and the same for Catholics, Protestants, and Orthodox Christians. There are some important beliefs that still separate Protestants from Catholics and Orthodox Christians. Some examples that Catholics hold dear are the real presence of Jesus of the Eucharist, the papacy, apostolic succession, and hierarchical organization of the Catholic Church, devotion to Mary and the saints, purgatory, and apostolic tradition, and all these beliefs are questioned and rejected by Protestants and Evangelicals. May there be many more people like Francis Chan who will continue to listen to the Holy Spirit and strive to bring about unity among all Christians so that the world may say, see how they love one another. In the Eucharist, as St. Augustine reminds us, we become what we eat and we eat what we have become, the one body of Christ. In celebration of Francis Chan's discovery of the real presence in the body and blood of Jesus, we now sing the Supper of the Lord.